Hi, welcome back to my channel. This video is discussion of pre-stressed concrete, part 1. So this one, is our methods of pre-stressing. And this afternoon, we would see what are the methods of pre-stressing, why do we use a pre-stressed concrete, and why it's necessary for us to, instead of using the conventional reinforced concrete, ginagamitan natin siya ng pre-stressed design. If something is wrong with my connection, you cannot hear me, again, feel free to message or inform me using the chat uh, option in this uh, Zoom meeting. So for first, uh, we'll define your pre-stressing. So by definition, your pre-stressed concrete are those in which cracking and tensile forces are greatly reduced or eliminated by the imposition of internal stress that are of opposite character to those that will be caused by the service or working loads. So meaning, if we have a simply supported beam, let's say, let's try to draw, I'm sorry, the conventional simply supported beam weighing or that is subjected to a uniform load W and then it has a length L. Tapos roller on left and then pin on right. So initially what we could look uh, after is we can construct your deflection, okay? Your ideal deflection. Pero sa pre-stress design, wala pa siyang load, beam pa lang siya. Tapos meron pa lang siyang support. Tapos pinatong mo yung beam. Meron na kaagad siyang upper displacement. Nakataas. Kasi yung paghatak mo dun sa, met, dun sa material mo or yung pag-stress mo sa kanya, whether it's post or pre-test uh, tensioning, uh, it causes your beam to deflect upwards. Para kapag patong mo ng beam weight o kaya nung mga self-weight, saka lang siya naka-cancel out. So this means that your uh, concrete or reinforced concrete that is pre-stressed has larger uh, capacity or larger moment resistance. So mas malakas yung pre-stress natin. And if we all know, uh, parang we've discussed before that if it ranges to 3,000 to 4,000 and then 5,000 to 6,000, nagiging pre-stress na siya from the conventional to our pre-stress design. We continue by the definition. Your pre-stress concrete uses concrete and high-strength steel known as your tendons. So what we will discover this afternoon until the evening is that your concrete reinforced will become pre-stressed if we introduce what we call your tendons. Your tendons could be above or below your neutral axis. So we already know what neutral axis is. And then, the materials used for tendons could either be of concrete or of steel. Pag steel, walang problema kasi talagang mas malakas yung steel in terms of tension compared to your concrete. Kapag ka naman concrete yung ginamit mong tendons, dapat you are sure and you are practicing that the strength of your concrete for tendons used are larger compared to the strength of your reinforced concrete members. What does it mean? Kunwari, meron akong uh, section. Yung section ko, it's been pre-stressed using a tendon that is located on this region. Okay? Tapos yung tendon kong yan, yan ay concrete den. Yung strength nito, which is FC prime, should be uh, less compared to the strength of your tendons. Okay? Ganun lang kasimple. Kailangan mas malakas yung tendon ko kumpara dun sa reinforced concrete material na ginagamit ko. Sometimes meron kang concrete with tendons. Sometimes meron ka namang reinforced concrete with tendons. So what does it mean? Kapag reinforced concrete with tendon, meron ka ng reinforcement, pre-stressed pa siya. Okay? Pre-stressed pa yung mga uh, bakal ko. What we do next is we need to see what are the methods of construction of your pre-stresses. Ito siya. Your general methods are categorized into two. One is the pre-tension and the other one is post-tension. 
So how do we differ the two uh, things? Yung pretension ko, the construction or the method of pre-stressing is by tendons are tensioned before pouring of concrete. So for example, this is your bar. This is your tendon. Hinahatak na siya. Hinahatak na siya, tapos at certain strength or at certain stress, saka bubuoin yung concrete pouring, saka ibubuhos, pagtigas, saka bibitawan yung pagka-stress niya or pagka-hatak niya. Yung next naman is that, uh, meron kang steel or tendon, ang kanyang uh, nangyayari, pag pour mo ng concrete, pag concrete pour mo, pag tigas niya, saka mo hahatakin yung iyong bakal or yung mga tendons mo. And then at certain time, when your concrete reaches its maximum strength, bibitawan mo na, puputulin mo na, and then uh, magkakaroon ka na ng pre-stressed concrete. Any questions so far? Okay. So wala pa naman because this is just uh, uh, understanding of what we're looking forward to having and computing late later. Okay, we will combine our good knowledge in bending stresses and then we will incorporate some uh, pointers for us to yield good equations and proper equations for pre-stressing. So I'll move on with the next one. So here, why do we use or why do we need to use a pre-stressed concrete instead of a conventional reinforced concrete? So maybe you have an idea or maybe you don't have. For me or for the purpose of the discussion, I, all, uh, I have an explanation on what could be a possible way kung bakit gagamit ka ng pre-stress theoretically. Okay, theoretically. Number one, we say a scenario. We have a conventional beam of length L that carries a uniform load, W. This is my scenario. I have a simple supported beam, pin at left, roller at right, left is L, it carries a uniform load, W, on its entire span. The maximum deflection for this beam is, anyone? So according to Limwell, our maximum deflection for a simply supported beam is 5WL to the fourth over 384, but it's missing with EI. All right, the modulus of your proper, the modulus of elasticity multiplied by the inertia. So we have established that this is my maximum deflection 5WL to the fourth over 384 EI. Now we say that 5W over 384 EI will be termed as a constant. For the purpose of the discussion only, we will say that 5W over 384 EI is equal to K, or the constant value. The deflection can be denoted now as KL to the fourth. Why did it had? Uh, why did we arrive from that? Kasi nga sinabi natin, gawin na lang natin constant muna for presentation purposes. Yung 5W over 384 EI. Therefore, my maximum deflection for this beam which is simply supported, carrying a uniform load on its entire span is KL to the fourth. We're given now the length of my beam. Using this equation, we can deflect or we can compute for the maximum deflection equal to, so our maximum deflection would be 256K. So why do we do this? Why do we have to, to assume that uh, this would be uh, the, the the explanation on why we use free stresses, assuming that we still have the constant k. All right, huh? we still have the constant k. And by now, we are looking forward or we're looking or examining an 8 meter long span beam. Sabihan yung kanina 4 meters, 256k. That's the deflection. It could be measured in millimeters, it could be measured in centimeters. Pero we're sure that it's going downward. Kasi paganun yung deflection niya. Pa? Baba dito. Okay? Now, if we use the same beam having the constant value 5W over 384EI, which is my K, we conserve everything, the maximum deflection would be 4096K. Using still your KL to the fourth. We're doing nothing. We're just assuming that L is 4 and L is 8. Now, how can we say that pre-stress are to be used in terms of this uh, situation. I don't know if you're familiar, 
But what we have is, uh, can you see the whole screen? Hindi naman nagbablock. Kasi sa akin nagbablock eh. Pag ginagalaw ko itong ano, parang cursor na to. Okay. Wala naman kayo nakikita parang black na bar. Okay. Kasi akala ko may nakikita kayo. Okay. Thank you very much. So dito, may explanation siya. Let's read. The change in length, which is twice from 4 to 8, produces an abrupt change in deflection by a factor of 16. How did we know? 4096 over 256 is 16. Therefore, kapag dinoble ko yung length, magiging times 16 yung deflection ko. Let's take from the national code that the maximum deflection allowed could be L over 240. For the 4,000 millimeter beam, 4,000 over 240 is 16.67. Assuming that the, uh, that the 4 meter, when computed, would result to, ta, to a 10 mm actual deflection. So by virtue of investigation, by virtue of acceptance, and by the virtue of your knowledge in the usage of this actual versus allowable, we can say that it's safe because 10 millimeters is less than 16. However, if we apply the same virtue, let's say L over 240, but now we're using 8,000 millimeters. Can you compute 8,000 over 240? Would it result to 33.33? I think so, right? This is 33.33. However, <coughs> excuse me. However, the problem now is that when I will use the same value for the actual deflection, which was 10, and then now compute by the factor of 16, 160 is much higher to your allowable deflection. Therefore, it would fail. Therefore, it's not safe. What do we do? We are men there are many ways to, uh, to, to answer the question or to, to, to attend to this problem. As a civil engineer, in the future, or as a practicing engineer in the future, the previous scenario can be solved by minimizing the deflection. Kailangan lang naman, liitan ko yung deflection para sumave siya dun sa 33.33. But how can you do that? Adjusting the moment of inertia could be possible. I equal to BH cube over 12 to a larger value. The larger the, the value of your inertia, the lesser would your be, uh, will your deflection be. Bakit? Kasi di ba dun sa equation mo, deflection is equal to 5W L to the 4th over 384 EI. Your I is on the denominator. An increase on your inertia would mean a decrease on your deflection. However, there are other things that will happen. Kapag ginawa mo, nilakihan mo yung inertia. You can only make your inertia larger kapag nilakihan mo yung H. Pero, this would result to an uneconomical H. The overall depth will be too deep. Baka umabot ka na ng 1,000 millimeters, baka umabot ka na ng 1,200 millimeters for a residential building or for an elemental structure. Ayaw mo nun. Bakit ayaw mo nun? Number one, ang pangit naman kung sobrang laki. Tapos, kapag sobrang laki, baka magkaroon ka ng problem kay architectural perspective. So right now, panipisan, paliitan, tsaka ay kailangan na itatago, na itatago yung element mo or yung section mo. So what you can do with that is that pwede mong lakihan, pero baka magkaroon ka ng problem kay architecture or kay, uh, kay architect. Sa sunod naman, kapag nilakihan mo, bibigat siya. Kasi di ba nilakihan mo yung section, e concrete, may unit weight yon per area. So therefore, it will be heavier. So this pains or this questions are the reasons why we transition to a pre-stress beam. Welcome to the discussion of pre-stress design. Assuming that this is my reinforced, or this is my concrete, and this will have my neutral axis, okay? This is the forces that are caused by your pre-stressing. This is the axis where your tendons are located. The cross section, uh, sorry, the tendons are located below your neutral axis, and this is your section. Paano to nangyari? Kunwari sabihin natin siya ay 
free tensioning. Okay? Free tensioning. So, hinatak yung bakal. Hinatak yung bakal. Tapos, ginawa yung concrete. No? Paggawa ng concrete, pinutol. Pagputol, binitawa na siya. Nagkaroon ka ngayon ng tension dyan, ng tension dyan. E di ba alam naman nating lahat as an engineer na pwede ako maglagay dito kasi nga ina-analyze ko siya. So, yun yung represent, uh, representation ng letter P ko. Okay? That is my letter P. Internally, it is subjected to tension but on our analysis, it turns out that it has a compression. So, nagkakaroon siya ng, ah, sorry, kailangan pala ay pulling. Kailangan paloob, no? Kailangan paloob para mag-cancel siya. So, that is the illustration of your pre-stressed concrete. Again, the red one is my tendon. The centroid of my tendon measured to my neutral axis would be my pre-stressing force and then my eccentricity. Alright? Any questions so far? Okay, let's continue. Okay, now we do the concept of pre-stressed concrete. This is my pre-stressed concrete taken from the previous slide. It has a centricity E taken, uh, measured from the neutral axis, and then your pre-stressing is my force P. This one could be uh, simplified in terms of I want my force P to be located at the neutral axis. So, I will transfer it. Ilalagay ko dito. Mas gusto ko nandun siya. Para direct yung aking stress. Actual stress. Force over area. Pero hindi ko pwedeng gawin yon right away. Or nang ganun-ganun lang. Kasi binabago ko na yung aking uh, figure. Gagawin ko sa kanya is, lalagyan ko din siya dito ng force P. Nilagyan ko pa kaliwa. Nilagyan ko pa kanan. Walang nangyari. Okay? Pero, mas magiging mabilis siyang i-analyze. I will retain my force P at neutral axis and I will call this one and this one to be my moment or my couple. My couple would yield to a value of P multiplied by E. Is that clear? I can now say that this is the new form of my pre-stressed concrete. If you take notice, I will erase ah, I will erase my drawing. Okay, kasi ang pangit naman niya. I will erase my drawing. This force now is exactly at the neutral axis and now my uh, my beam is subjected to a couple or a moment which is equal to PE. Para saan tong mga to? Because we are yielding next time our general equation for pre-stressed concrete. Kung makikita nyo, Yung aking moment, nagkaroon siya dito ng initial deflection. Ito yung sinasabi ko. Wala pang loading, pre-stressing pa lang siya, tumataas na kaagad kasi nga tension siya sa looban. Parang hinahatak siya pa loob, so umuulbok siya. Ganyan. Hindi ko alam kung paano yung explain, pero ganun yun. Uh, yung distance ng dalawang yan, it's my chamber. Also, right away, yung our knowledge is that dahil ito, it stretches, the top would be in tension. The bottom would be in compression. Parang kasi di ba nagiging arco siyang ganyan. Yung ilalim, compression yon. Yung taas, tension siya. It's very important when we're yielding our uh, general equations because later, makikita natin bakit positive, bakit negative, bakit ina-add, bakit sinusubtract. With, uh, we'll take a note here that the due to moment, beam results to an initial upward deflection called as your camber. Ito yung ating initial deflection called as your camber. Due to self-weight and dead loads, beam flattens. So assuming, di ba, wala pang load, malakas na siya, over, over. Parang example nito, nagkaroon ka ng rebate sa tuition fee mo, di ba? Negative yung tuition mo. Parang ganun yung camber. Pero no nag-enroll ka, nilagyan mo na ng load, nag-zero na ulit siya. Alright? The only deflection would be caused by your live load. We continue. The, the, the stresses to be considered in pre-stress are uh, divided into three. One is the direct compressive force by the tendons. We also denote that it's already compression kasi nga, it pushes my concrete. Number two, the moment. Due to the eccentricity of the pre-stress. Ito siya. Yung aking M equal to PE. The last one is if your pre-stressed concrete 
will be subjected to service loads or working loads. Therefore, it would have to be uh, analyzed under flexure stress due to loadings. The resultant stress, which we call F, a small f, at any section is the algebraic sum of the stresses at the section with compressive stress treated to be negative and tensile stress treated to be positive. What does it mean? This is our general equation. It's similar to your biaxial bending, pero nadagdagan siya ng PEC over I. I remember niyo na to kasi it would help kapag na memorize natin F is equal to negative PA plus or minus PEC over I plus or minus MC over I. Yung minus ko, it's denoted by the compressive force that was used in number one. Yung number two and number three, we are yet to discover whether it's a positive or a negative value, both for PEC over I and for MC over I. Any questions so far? I resume the session. This is now. For a rectangular beam, what do we have for our general equation? Let me write F is equal to minus P, correct? Over area plus or minus P, E, C over I plus or minus m c over i dito bibigyan natin kayo ng tipik ng rectangular ng equation for a rectangular beam kasi usually naman yung concrete mo rectangular so aside from some uh, memorizing this equation baka pwedeng ma-memorize mo na yung equation for a rectangular beam let's derive if example i have a pre-stressed concrete of base b and height H. What would be here? This is negative P over my area plus or minus P multiplied by E. Neutral axis would be here exactly H over 2. That's my compressive or compression fiber distance to neutral axis. So ito ay H over 2 over ISBH cubed over 12 plus or minus what's my m unknown what's my c ayun pa den h over 2 over b h cube over 12 so this will improve so tiga tiga lang tayo ng content kung pangit pasensya na kayo this would be <coughs> the working equation pag simplify ko to it would result to 6 pe over BH squared. Pag sinimplify ko to, 6M over BH squared. Questions? So for the rectangular beam, the stress is given to be negative P over BH plus or minus 6PE over BH squared plus or minus 6M over BH squared. But there's nothing wrong, ha, if you will stick with this general equation. Okay lang din yun sa akin. Kung gusto mo, isa lang yung i-memorize mo. Pero if you're uh, writing it in an index card, very nice then. Kung meron ka ng ginagawang formula compilation. I, how will I erase? Erase. I will erase first. Give me time. So now, we will discover ano ba yung aking second term and last term Bakit kailangan plus siya or kailan siya kailangan plus or kailan siya kailangan minus? Minag-chat, pero walang siya. Okay. The rule of signs. The general equation is taken to be negative P over A plus or minus 6 PE, uh, PEC over I plus or minus MC over I. The rule of sign is that if my P is caused by the pre-stressing force, my E is my eccentricity and my M is the moment due to loading, whether it's superimposed, dead load, or live load. I is my moment of inertia for the gross cross-section. The moment of inertia for the gross cross-section of your rectangle is BH cubed over 12. The first term of the equation is always negative. 
Okay? Wala nang mangyayari doon. Wala nang magbabago doon. It is always negative. Bakit? From our illustration before, we've seen that it is going to my... Uh, kunyari ako yung beam, ha? Parang paganya. So, compression nyo. Okay? Parang compression nyo. For number two, for the second term, ito yung PEC over I, it would be positive or negative depending on the issue of or the location we are pertaining. Negative po siya kapag bottom of my pre-stress concrete. Positive siya kapag top of my pre-stress concrete. Ganun ka simple. Yung second term, positive sa taas, negative kapag sa ibaba. Number three, for the third equation, paano kaya yung positive or negative? If your moment or your bending causes tension, it's positive. If your bending or your moment causes uh, compression, it is negative. How do we illustrate that from a figure? So itong number one, wala tayong tanong dyan kasi lahat siya ay compression. And ito yung piko. So ito C, ito ay C. Both are compression. Assuming that this is my neutral axis. For number two, this is my neutral axis. Kung gusto mong kunin yung stress sa taas, automatic, kailangan idagdag mo yung PEC over I. Kung gusto mong kunin yung stress sa baba, automatic, i-minus mo. That should be negative. For the last one, or the number three, if this is my neutral axis, and A. My neutral axis, if my moment results to tension, or compression, this is positive, this is negative. Again, this is my neutral axis. If my moment causes tension and compression, this is positive, this is negative. Questions or anything that you want to clarify? A 200 beam? My 400 millimeter concrete beam is uh, pre-stressed with a final pre-stressing force of 500 kilonewton at an eccentricity of 100 millimeters below the neutral axis. So we know already it's pre-stressed kasi sinabi niya, pre-stressed daw siya. Tapos yung pre-stressing force, which is P, is equal to 500 kilonewton. Your eccentricity E is equal to 100 millimeters below the neutral axis. We are asked to determine the maximum moment that will produce no tension at the bottom fiber. So what is our working equation given the following values? Requirement is maximum moment that produces no tension. I think I have a question. Sir, pwede po pabalik sa galit ng slide po? Di ko po. Ah, okay. Ah, Rose already gave it. That's the correct value. Thank you, Rosa. I missed the chat. Ah, pasensya na. Niko nakita ka agad. Thank you to those who sent the message. Ah, pwede ko yung mag-usap habang nag-discuss ako? Anyway, I will continue. So, pwede pala yun. How do you do that? Ah, I can chat to someone. <laughs> Oo nga, no? Oo nga. That's good to know. Okay. O, mag-ingat kayo, ha? Baka nililigawan nyo tapos mag-chat kayo. Everyone yung malagay nyo. Mamaya, maano pa tayo. Anyway, that's a commercial. Let's proceed with this one, okay? Which is the solution? The solution here is very simple, okay? Can anyone give me the working equation for a rectangular pre-stressed concrete? Yung ginamit natin kanina. Anyone who could give me that? Not the general, but the one specific for a rectangular beam or rectangular pre-stressed beam. All right, according to Maria, that is P, negative PBH plus or minus 6PE over BH cubed squared plus or minus 6MBH. I'll give her plus 10. Are you part of my class or a different section? Ito ka ba sa akin? Sayang kasi yung class pag hindi ka naman sa akin. All right, sayang yan. So be proactive today. There's a lot of classes coming in. Kasi quiz 1 na. Kailangan magka-plus ka na para pumasa ka man lang. Estasio. 
Okay, so according to her, that is our value. So uh, from our equation, I think that's correct. So let's just check from my slides, no? From my slides. So this is my working equation. Ngayon ang tanong na lang natin, ano yung positive, ano yung negative? If we insert the values, to answer the question, what is the maximum moment, which is M, no? the maximum moment M, that produces zero tension at the bottom fiber. What does it mean? Pag walang tension, ibig sabihin walang stress. Therefore, F is zero. All right? As simple as that. That would be my working equation. Now, I will continue to input the values P over BH plus or minus 6BPE over BH squared plus or minus 6m over bh squared. These are the values. 500,000 for p, bh is 200 by 400, 6pe is 6 times 500 times 100, which is your eccentricity from the neutral axis. 200 times 400 squared plus or minus 6m over 200 times 400 squared. But because you listened very well in our discussion, we will go back to this one. The first term is always negative. For the second term, pwedeng positive, pwedeng negative. E di ba ang tinatanong sa atin at the bottom fiber? Sabi niya, pag sa second term, bottom, negative dapat. Number three, kapag third term, kapag yung moment ko, nag induce siya ng tension, it is positive. Therefore, I will use this as positive. Paano ko nalamang tension? Sabi dun sa problem. Tension at the bottom, Fiber. Therefore, your working equation would be this. Plus, minus, and then plus. Give me the value for M in kilonewton meter. Okay, so our final answer, if it's in terms of newton millimeter, 83,333,333.33. Kilonewton meter, 83.33. All right? Questions? Ah, di ba ang bilis lang? Ang dali-dali lang nito? Kayang-kaya na natin mag-exam. So, malinaw na sa atin, ano? Kung ano yung positive, ano yung negative. The next discussion would be, what if we won't use our general equation. We want to apply our knowledge or maybe we want to clarify your questions regarding what is positive or what is negative. As we see, kanina, may mga clarification kayo. Kung ano yung iba plus, ano yung iba minus, tapos na-answer naman natin. And then right now, may sample problem tayo using the general equation. Let's try to have the elastic stresses under different stages of loading in pre-stress construction. This full topic will be discussed by a board exam problem. This is taken again from the board exam. This is our problem. The flooring of a warehouse is made up of double T-joists as shown. The joists are simply supported on a span of 7.5 meters and are pre-tensioned with one tendon. In each stem, with an initial jacking force of 745 kilonewton each, located 75 millimeters below your neutral axis. Loss of stress at service load is 18%. Ibig sabihin, nung pinari-stress siya, hinahata, tapos tumigas yung concrete, binitawan yung steel, nagkaroon daw siya ng loss ng 18%. Ibig sabihin, yung original uh, tensile force, nagkaroon ng pagbaba na, 18%, which would be your final pre-stressing force. This is the figure for this problem. Your total area is 200,000. Your I is 1880 times 10 to the 6. The dead load, excluding self-weight, is 2.3 kilopascal. And live load is 6 kilopascal. Taken also that from this to this, it's 88 millimeters. From this to this, it's 267, and then uh, reflected that above my top bottom fiber to tendon, 75 mm, tapos yung natitira, eccentricity. This is the questions. Your, uh, your problem has three situations. One, 
we compute for the stress at the bottom fiber at mid-span due to the initial pre-stressing force and self-weight. Number two, we compute the resulting stress at the bottom fiber at mid-span due to service loads and final pre-stressing force. And finally, what additional superimposed load can the joists carry so that the resulting stress at the bottom fiber at mid-span is zero? So if there are no questions, let's proceed with the solution. This is the solution for 5.1. I want to compute the stress at the top fiber at mid-span due to the initial pre-stressing force and my self-weight. Let's focus first our attention to the pre-stressing force. The pre-stressing force has been discussed. It's just the P at the bottom. This is how it would look like. And then we can uh, make it or represent it in terms of the force at the neutral axis and then the moment PE. This is how it would look like. Let's compute for P first. Sabi niya sa problem, we have 745 each. So kailangan ko ng dalawa. 1490. Anyone who could compute for my M. M is equal to P multiplied by E. Computing for your moment, your moment is equal to 1490 multiplied by the eccentricity. And your eccentricity is 267 minus 75, which is 192. Therefore, your moment is 286.08. Okay, we will use your P and your 286.08 to get the stresses caused by your pre-stressing force at the top fiber at mid-span. All right? Ayun ha, medyo mahaba yung hinahanap natin. Let's continue. Stresses caused by the pre-stressing force. This is my force P at neutral axis. Okay? Ano yung ating F top mid-span? Alam natin na sa taas at sa baba, Compression. Kasi siya ay compression force. Therefore, my F top mid span is equal to negative P over my area. From the problem, we get the area equal to 200,000. Can you please compute for F top mid span? Your stress would be negative 7.45 megapascal. If you could see, it's in kilonewton, so there's a factor which is 1,000 para maging megapascals siya. So always practice and be familiar with your units para magkaroon tayo ng correct answer. So in case, uh, yon sabi ni Des, in kilonewton per, per square meters. So magkakaroon tayo ng error kasi kapag sinabi natin yung 7,450 kilonewton per square meters, Pwede, pwede. That is megapascal din. So, pero ako, ang ilalagay ko na lang, megapascal para simplify. Okay? Kung gusto ko naman kunin yung f top bottom, pareho lang yun. So, nandito lang siya. Ay, sorry, f bot mid span. Kasi pareho lang naman siyang compression, pareho lang naman siyang compression. Sa taas at sa baba. Let's save your negative 745 sa calcium. At letter A. We will call it out later. Let's do this. Huh? Let's do that. Let's store negative 7.45 on our calculator. Alright? Uh, nakuha ko na yung stress due to my pre-stressing force. Let's now compute my pre-stressing force of uh, stress caused by your PE or the eccentric moment. Eccentric load, P. Ito siya ha. Ayan. Pag ganyan ang itsura, yung sa ilalim, compression. Yung sa itaas, tension. Paano ko nalaman? Kasi... Yung shape ng curve. Yung shape ng deflection niya ay paganyan. E di ba paganyan, nakasimangot ka, negative moment. O compression sa baba, tension sa taas. Alright? Pwede makalimutan mo yung general equation. Pero wag mong kalimutan kung ano yung tension, ano yung compression. Alright? Computing for F top mid span, it would be equal to, lagay natin positive sa taas kasi tension siya, tapos mamaya, negative. Can you please compute this value for me? In mega pascal. Give me the correct value in mega pascal. So according to you, it's 13.39. So this is 13.39 mega pascal. Okay? How about your F bottom mid span? I will not show 
the uh, <coughs> the values can you compute for f bottom mid span so what we do is we cannot say but because of the pre stressing force kung ano yung top yun yung bottom kasi dito regardless kung nasaan yung position ng neutral axis force over area lang siya pero for the moment it's mc over i Though your moment is constant and your eye is constant, your distance to compression and to tension fiber would differ. Yung aking MC over I, yung F top, uses 88 mm for C. And then for the bottom, your C ko is yung 267. Kasi yun siya ah. Ito nandito siya. Compression sa baba, tension sa itaas. That's why it's negative 40.63. So good for... Tama ba yung sagot niya? Pero malapit na, baka mali lang siya ng pindot. No? Nako, mali pala si Aniza. Sayang naman. What did you use? Pero tama sana, oh. 40.63. Tama si Trevor. No? Si Trevor. Pero bibigyan ko na si Aniza ng tamang sagot. Pero on my exam in Blackboard, 40.48 is incorrect. Okay? Dapat yung 40.63. Use exact values. Plus 10, si Aniza. Uh, sakilan. Pero siyempre, lagyan natin si Trevor. Ng Del Socorro. Okay. Naintindihan nyo ba kung bakit 40.63, guys? Yan ha. Sa RCD, wala masyadong ano, escape route. Wala masyadong mga, ano, mga shortcuts. Talagang kailangan you proceed with the fundamental and the, the basic of the application for computing. Okay? So, now that we have these two values, we can now solve for number one. O, number one pa lang rin tayo, ha? Nung problem number five. Due to self-weight, meron na tayong pre-stressing force. Due to the force P, and then due to your PE. Correct? Pero wala pa tayong self-weight. Kumpitin natin yon. Due to my self-weight. Due to my self-weight on number one, this is what will happen. And then, my W will be computed to be equal to the unit weight of your concrete multiplied by your area. Bakit natin kailangan gawin yung due to self-weight? Kasi tinatanong niya. Pagsamahin mo daw yung pre-stressing force sa yung self-weight, tapos kunin mo yung, uh, yung resultant ng stresses niya sa top fiber. So here, your concrete for uh, your gamma of concrete is used to be uh, used is 24 kilonewton per cubic meter. Diba we've established at our previous lectures if it's not specified you are uh, okay to assume na 24 kilonewton per cubic meter siya. Kaya wala dito, dumating ko na kaagad yung 24. The area is given 200,000. Your unit way uh, your uniform load W would be 4.8 kilonewton per meter. Para sa nyan, we will yield the moment at mid-span. If we cut this section on half, sa gitna, that would be where my maximum moment is. Saka yun yung position or location na we're looking forward. So kunin ko yung moment doon, simply lang, WL squared over 8 using 4.8 as my W. Can you please compute for the moment? The deflection would be like this for your simply supported beam and therefore we can denote that at the bottom tension at the top is compression. So, yung aking top stress negative, yung aking bottom stress positive. Kasi yun yung location ng tension and ng compression ko. So, this is my F top mid span. Can you please compute for the value of F top mid span using this equation and also give me the value of F top or uh, F bottom mid span. Both in uh, megapascal. Again, give me two values, F top mid span and F bottom mid span. Both in megapascal. Yun, ang bilis. No? Sabi ni Benitez, no? si Junjin, 
is 4.36. Okay? Let's check. That would be 4.36. Ayan. So, check ko lang ganito. Okay? So, meron bang tanong? So, is Benitez part of my class? Kasi pag hindi ikaw, si Justin na lang. Yes, sir. Alright. Plus 10 for Miss Benitez. So, konting try pa, guys. Para maganda ang grade mo. Natutok ka na, mataas pa ang grade mo. No? Diba? Masaya na yun tayo. Ah, meron na tayong answer to 5.1. You now have 1 over 75 in the board exam. Let's continue. Let's have 5.2. 5.2, we compute the resulting stress at the bottom fiber at mid-span due to the service loads and final pre-stressing force. In here, due to the final pre-stressing force first, okay? Yun muna yung compute natin. Due to the final pre-stressing force. Ano yung ating pre-stressing force? 745 times 2, which is 1490. Pero sabi sa problem, there's a loss of stress at 18%. So, i-multiply lang natin yun. Papihin lang natin yung kaninang illustrations natin. And then your P is here. Therefore, your P final is 82%. Of 1490. Can you please give me the value of M due to your 1221.8 kilonewton final pre -stre uh, final stressing force? So this is what we have so far, computing for the moment, and then the pre-stresses. So you can just simply multiply your 7.45 a while ago by 82%. But for this discussion, because this is the first time we're doing this. So it would help kung we're doing it step at a time, one step at a time. All right. So F top mid span, there is no issue because uh, eccentricity will not matter. Therefore, F bottom mid span would still be negative six point eleven. Okay. So having known uh, or being aware of your possible values for your F top mid span and f bottom mid span due to pe can you please compute these two values f top mid span f bottom mid span uh, use the correct signs and then give me the correct units in meg megapascal all right the first one to give the two values gets the plus point okay so according to mark negative 10.98 and according to him also 33.32 so, no plus anymore. So, ayan. Ayan. Kaso, mali yung sign niya. No? Dapat po, yung aking top is positive kasi tension yon. Yung aking bottom ay negative yon. Wala ka pa ba ngayon? Ay, naku, sorry. Kala ko meron ka na. Kaya hindi kita pinapansin eh. Plus 10. Sorry, sorry. So, Mark has plus 10. So, meron na, ha? Let's give others. Pero wag mo itachat sa kanila yung chinachat mo tapos ipasend mo lang. Baka karma kayo, wag kayong ganun. Okay, nakita ba natin na positive yung taas? Ay, pero hindi kita pwedeng bigyan ng plus mark kasi mali yung signs mo. No? Dapat positive sa taas, negative sa bottom. Mamaya ulit, no? Try ulit, try ulit. Uh, any other clarification with this? Now, we will answer 5.2 using your values. Before that, we compute for due to the service load. Ito yung combination for number 2. Eh. Final pre-stressing plus service loads. Meron akong service loads. Yung aking 6.11, that's negative, and then positive 33.32. I'm sorry, negative 33.32. So, ito yung aking due to service load. So, can anyone give me the value of W for this one? 
W would be your service loads. Okay? Can you please give me W for this one? That is caused by your service loads. Now, computing for W equal to 24.72, we can compute for the moment, which would be equal to 173.8125. Okay. Does June Jean have a, a, a plus point na? Parang you have Nano Miss Benitez. Uh, meron na ako dito. Okay? Meron na. So now, let's compute for the stress. Give me the stress at top and bottom, correct values and correct units. The stress at the bottom fiber at mid-span due to the service load and final pre-stressing force are taken in his summary. Bottom na tayo guys ha, bottom na. Yung negative 6.11, negative 33.32, and then yung ating 24.69. Adding those values, it would result to what? The pre-stressing, uh, the pre-stress at the bottom fiber is at mid-span equal to, sabi na, for 5.3, what, uh, this is an error lang ha, sorry. What additional superimposed load can the joists carry? So that the resulting stress at the bottom fiber at mid-span is zero. This can uh, be computed by saying that the additional superimposed load, W, is the point in question. All right? Meaning, if it's the question, tapos sabi niya at the bottom mid-span, we are using the value from 5.2. But first, let's compute the maximum moment. The maximum moment would be W L squared over 8, which is 7.03125W. Yaan, gagamitin ko siya dun sa 5.2. Sabi kasi natin sa 5.2, it is stress. Tapos yung stress dun sa 5.2, dagdagan ko siya plus or minus MC over I. Yun yung tanong. Pero daw sabi niya, ano daw yung moment or ano daw yung superimpose na mag yield dito na dapat zero yung stress ko. Yung value ng 5.2 natin kung tama ka, tatama ka din sa 5.3 kasi i-equate mo lang siya. F, value for 5.2 equal to MC over I. Okay? So our working equation would be like that. But let's proceed with the solution. So taking from 5.2. Bakit 5.2? Kasi pareho yung bottom stress fiber. And then here, we are assuming that the, the, the superimposed would be uh, in relation to your service load and your final pre-stressing force. 5.2. Yan siya. 14.74, we equate, can you please compute for W using this equation? C is what and I is what? So, since you're giving answers which are 14.76, this is the answer for 5.3. Having those values, our final answers, rounded to two decimal places, we assume that you can answer three questions from the 75 item uh, question in the board exam, okay? So yung atin ay, at least right now, we can compute your elastic stresses under different stages of loading in pre-stress concrete or construction. Any questions?